So this video will be all about learning when and how to use the different right hand rules. Yes, lefties, you do need to use your right hand. Basically, there are two confirmations that you need to know. One is the thumbs up with your fingers not completely curled all the way around, and the other is this guy, what you probably think of when you think of the right hand rule. Now, most of you probably learned it like I did with an open palm, but I don't really like that because it makes it harder conceptually. Doing this really defines three axes. You have your X, your Y, and the Z, and it just makes doing these problems that much easier. So, try it out. Okay, so the first right-hand rule for long, straight, current-carrying wires is the thumbs-up rule, and it's the simplest one. Now, I'm not sure there's any real consensus on the numbering of these rules. Typically, this one is labeled as number one. Uh, but there is consensus on their uses, so if your book says that my first right-hand rule is actually the third, well, who cares, just learn how to use it, and in what context you use it. So, you give the thumbs up, but with your hand not entirely clenched, as if you had a wire in the middle, and you point your thumb in the direction of the current. That's it. Your fingers represent the magnetic field curving around the wire, which would look something like this from our perspective. Coming out of the page on the left, and going into the page on the right. Sometimes you see the second right-hand rule defined as finding out the magnetic field in a circular loop, but you can just use an extension of the first. Pick a tangent to any point on the loop and use the same thumbs up to find the magnetic field through the loop. Uh, the top point is often the easiest, that's what I do. In this case, your thumb points to the right, still in the direction of the current, and you can see that the field is going into the page through the loop. And that's, the, that's it, that's the first right-hand rule. The second right-hand rule as far as I'm concerned, is the magnetic force on a wire in a magnetic field, which is given by the equation F equals I, the current, L, length of the wire, B, the strength of the magnetic field, and sine theta, meaning that only the perpendicular component counts, which I'll get into later. So the second and third rules are probably what you think of when you think of the right-hand rule, which is all about finding the direction of the magnetic force, in this case, on a wire. And to do that, you use the triaxis thing I showed during the intro. So, when you do this, your index finger always points in the direction of the magnetic field. And for the second rule in particular, your thumb points just like it does for the first rule. It points in the direction of the current. Uh, in this case, that's down. And you can't see my thumb in this picture for that reason. It's the top-down view. Anyway, this gives us our result, the middle finger, which is always what you're looking for, it will always be the resultant vector, so the force on the wire in this example is pointing to the right. The third right-hand rule just supplants the wire for a charged particle, meaning your thumb points in the direction of its velocity rather than in the direction of the current. It does get a little bit more complicated, but let's go through this example first. As always, index finger points into the page because that's the direction of the magnetic field. Thumb to the right because that's the direction of the particle's velocity, which gives us the middle finger pointing up in the direction of the force. And no, I'm not trying to weirdly flip you off in this picture. So, the, th the sine theta parts of this equation, F equals QVB sine theta, indicates that only per the perpendicular component of the particle's velocity factors into the force. This is true any time you see an equation with sine in it. Think about torque. What this means is that if the velocity of the particle, or in the previous example the direction of the current, is parallel or anti-parallel to the B field, the force will be zero. There won't be one. So watch out for that. Sometimes you combine two right-hand rules, like in this example. We want to know the direction of the force on the charged particle due to the wire's B field, but first we need to find the direction of said B field. So you use the first right-hand rule to do that, which would give us this, coming out of the page. So point your index finger accordingly. Then it's just a matter of using the third right-hand rule, pointing your thumb in the direction of the particle's velocity. This would result in our middle finger pointing down. But, and this is something else that makes the third right-hand rule a bit more complicated, the particle in this instance is negatively charged. Whenever this is the case, your resultant vector will be in the opposite direction that your middle finger is pointing, so the force will actually be up. Whenever you see a right-hand rule question with a negatively charged particle, always treat it like it's positive and then flip it at the end. There is another way of doing this where you change how you point your index and thumb beforehand, but that's just messier and more confusing, so I don't recommend it. 
Here's another example of combining two rules. A question you might get on the MCAT or in your course involves two current carrying wires next to each other and asks, do they repel or do they attract? If you'd like to figure this out on your own, pause the video now as I'm going to explain how to do this. So the way you do this is to choose one wire and then the other one is just vice versa. So use the first right hand rule on any wire you so choose. I'm going to do the right one. That would give us a B field experienced by the left wire that is directed into the page. Now, just do the second right hand rule on the left wire to find the force on it is directed towards the right wire. Then you just do everything again, only vice versa. This would mean that the right wire experiences a force to the left. So both of these wires experience forces towards each other, meaning they attract. They both exert forces on each other that make them move towards each other, and this is always the case for wires with parallel currents. And so obviously this means if their currents were anti-parallel, meaning they're in opposite directions, they would repel. Uh, and that's it. That's really all there is to the right-hand rule. Here are some questions. If you notice in question 2a that the particle is traveling into the page, go ahead and pause the video while you work on them, as the answer slide will appear in about five seconds, so pause it now. And here are the answers. Feel free to leave a comment or a question about this video or anything about my channel, and I'll get back to you.